Welcome to lesson four of module seven, infectious diseases. In this video, we're going to be looking at how diseases are transmitted in agriculture, but also going to be looking at some adaptations of pathogens that help them um, to facilitate their entry into and their transmission between hosts. So there are several impacts of disease on agriculture. And the first one we're going to talk about is diseases and genetic variation. Any plant disease will affect the yield and quality of crops. And populations of plants used in agriculture um, can be particularly vulnerable to these diseases as they're often genetically similar within the species. So an example of this is potato blight. Um, and this happened where the potato crops were infected by a fungal pathogen, uh, the ply Phytothora infestans, and it destroyed the entire crop due to the lack of gen genetic variation. The devastation caused by these diseases in genetically similar crops uh, reminds us uh, and farmers and anyone related to the agricultural industry about the importance of maintaining biodiversity in our crops uh, as it may minimizes the transmission of disease. The next impact is the intensification and change in farming practices. Changes in farming practices can result in the emergence of new diseases and facilitate, facilitate the transmission of existing diseases. Intensive farming uh, creates high densities of livestock. And when livestock are in high densities within an area, it increases the direct contact between animals and therefore increases the risk of infectious disease transmission. Uh, any of uh, the intensification of farming requires the need to use antibiotics and vaccines within the livestock um, and consumption of and contact with any infected animals can lead to the spread of zoonotic diseases. Um, some examples of this is mad cow disease, which was acquired by eating products from infected cattle. And this resulted in the ban of feeding any mammalian protein to cattle in the agricultural industry. The next impact is due to biosecurity and border control. So due to the increase in travel, imports, exports, and global connection, um, we have seen an increase in the chance of introducing new diseases within a population. It's the reason why there's biosecurity at sea and airports, and this aims to prevent the introduction of any new diseases into a population. Quarantine conditions are in place for pets and animals within Australia, which requires them to uh, be put into quarantine until we can ensure that they are clear and free of any infectious diseases and human activities such as travel and bushwalking increases the speed at which pathogens move around the globe which is why um, some areas have some really strict biosecurity measures in place um, an example of this is the galapagos island where they um, make sure that there is no dirt and seeds or anything in your shoes as you move between islands to ensure that um, the endemic species are not transferred between the islands as they would not survive when we talk about adaptations of pathogens, there are some which um, allow entry into the host and transmission between our hosts. Apressoria is a specialized penetration organ in fungi, which are used to infect host plants. Vectors are another way of overcoming the skin barrier. So the example of mosquitoes, um, uh, biting insects, which allow uh, the skin to be penetrated. So therefore, they can then introduce the disease. Uh, the penetration of the mucus barrier through physical propulsion or the chemical breakdown of mucus. Antigenic variation um, causes the change of pathogen cells that are recognized by a host, allowing the pathogen more time to colonize a host before detection. And then biofilm growth can cause chronic infection and as it allows bacteria to increase its tolerance to antibiotics and host immune response systems. There are also adaptations that are helpful for pathogens in the spreading of disease. So um, causing host symptoms such as diarrhea, coughing and sneezing enhance disease transmission by potentially contaminating water, food uh, and intermediate surfaces or through direct contact. Some pathogens are in fact capable of altering the behavior of their host, and this allows the pathogen transmission and spread of disease. In animal hosts, these pathogens affect the CNS or the neuro neurochemical communication and toxoplasmosis in rodents. Um, this in fact reduces their innate fear of cats, which increases the reproductive success of the pathogen. That includes lesson four. Make sure you tune in for 